Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. Have you ever wondered what happened to one of your favorite childhood heroes that you never hear anything from? Well, I did, and I went on a little mission to see if I could find one of my childhood folk heroes, Refrigerator Perry. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. Well, good day, my friends. Yes, I, um, when I was a kid, I didn't know anything about football, but in 1985, I was born in 81, so I would have, you know, been four and a half at this point. 1985, the Chicago Bears were a huge deal, and the main reason that I could remember was the fridge. There was this defensive player who the Bears had drafted from Clemson, and this guy, they ended up using him on offense, and he was scoring touchdowns. I have always been a fan of the fridge because I remember as a kid not only how exciting he was to see, but he was a pop culture icon. He was in McDonald's commercials. Okay, that's four McDLTs, two large fries, and a Diet Coke. Right. Oh. Mm -mm. Don't worry, I'll clean up. McDonald's, where the refrigerator stocks up. Oh, right over there? Oh, free. We beat the Bengals, so you win. Stop on in at McDonald's this week and pick up your prize. Ah, uh, lunch. Coca-Cola commercials. Bigger bear. Give me a case, Coke. This bear loves the big, bold taste of Coca-Cola Classic, the original. And this bear loves the light, smooth taste of Coke. Because it goes down real easy. Kraft macaroni and cheese commercials. You're ready to show us some of your famous moves. Well, when someone goes for my Kraft cheese and macaroni, I go like this. What's <laughs> your favorite move, Fridge? The old Steelers play. The old Steelers play? Yeah, look. Hey. <laughs> little kids, and not so little kids, love Kraft macaroni and cheese. Because it's the cheesiest. He had his own grill like George Foreman. Not that, Fridge. This fridge, Super Bowl winner William Refrigerator Perry. How's it going, Fridge? I'm doing great, Steve. And what's your secret to great barbecue? Well, Steve, I started with a simple rule. Always start with a clean grill. And that's why I love the new Grill Daddy Pro. 420 for only $7.49. How many wings can you fit in the fridge? All of them. <laughs> there's fast food, and then there's KFC. Don't forget to load up on KFC wings for the big game. Uh, I remember he did Refrigerator commercials. William Perry, the refrigerator and his refrigerator. No, he's not eating. He's cleaning his refrigerator coils. The coils can save you money. Call 1-800-THE-FRIDGE for this and all kinds of energy saving tips from CPNL. He did Buick commercials or Pontiac commercials. He did so many things. In fact, he was a wrestler. He was on in uh, WCW and WWF in the uh, Royal Rumble. He was a boxer in the celebrity boxing matches. He was on Howard Stern, the guy, and he was a G.I. Joe. He's getting mad, he's getting mean. He's breaking the line for the G.I. Joe team. That's right, it's William the Refrigerator Perry. The fridge is drawing G.I. Joe. And you can get a free fridge. Here's how. Collect five fridge certificates or call the number on the certificate and the fridge will tell you how to get in on the action with only four certificates. There's a $1 handling charge. See details on specially marked G.I. Joe packages. Watch out, Cobra. Fridge is coming through. Go, Joe! He somehow became a G.I. Joe. So, for many years, you know, I had read about, you know, the fridge being in bad health. And um, I would say back in 2012, I discovered a movie that was kind of a movie where it was a real life Truman Show where this Jimmy Kimmel had produced it and they were making a movie where they were making the star of the movie believe that he was the star of a movie but it, they were actually pranking him throughout the whole movie. And so the storyline for the movie actually included the fridge's fridge getting stolen. Hey Perry, what's going on? How you doing, brother? How you doing, sir? There you go, guys. All right, man. What's going on? It was a total dream to meet this guy. Very honored. Very, very honored. Yes, Ernie. Hey, good seeing you, man. And so they did cast William Perry in that, and that is a movie called Windy City Heat. It's a pretty big cult classic film. I was a big fan of that, and recently they just had their 30th anniversary. They had everybody there, and they didn't have the fridge. 
So I started looking online and you know, I knew for about the last 10 years, occasionally, um, if you looked on celebrity autograph sites, you would see that he signed autographs through the mail. But for the last couple of years, there was nothing. And when I looked him up online, I couldn't even find any articles about him since 2016. So I was like, what happened to this guy, you know? At one point they were saying that he was really overweight, that he had a drinking problem, then he had diabetes, he had Julian's bar, so he had a lot of health problems that put him into a wheelchair. I saw that he was gonna lose his house, he was actually going to, uh, the bank was gonna foreclose on his house, but since then I couldn't find anything, and he doesn't really attend any autograph shows, so being that I'm a travel vlogger and that kind of what I do is try and live out all of the cool things that I ever thought would be fun in my life as a kid or growing up, I try and live those out. And so one of those was I thought, maybe I should find the fridge. So about three weeks ago in a video here where I was uh, vlogging Happy Humphrey's grave, I mentioned that in that town was the town that the fridge was from and that he apparently lived there. And uh, so I went on a little mission to see if I could find him. I went to the address that he used to sign autographs from and there was nobody there. But I also noticed that the house didn't have any wheelchair ramps or anything and it had stairs. So I kind of thought he probably isn't living here because last I saw he was in a wheelchair. Now, also what I was thinking was, you know, there's been nothing mentioned um, as far as financial problems or his health problems since 2016. So that could be a good thing. Um, it could be that his health is okay and that maybe he rebounded. You know, I, I, I was hoping that NFL, he has a pension and things like that. So, um, so I was in town and I looked online. Um, you know, public record, you can pretty much look for anybody's name and a lot of times their addresses are online, public. So I looked and I went to what was known as his last address, and when I got there, uh, an older white lady answered the door, and I said, well, sorry to bother you, I was looking for William Perry, and she said, well, he doesn't live here anymore. He used to live here, but he doesn't live here anymore. So a friend of mine uh, is always, you know, looking up addresses as well for his YouTube channel, and I said, hey, you know, can you look and see if you have any other addresses that I'm not finding? And he sent me another address, but I was already out of town. So I decided that I was gonna come back through uh, the next possible chance I got. Because sometimes I just feel like, man, when these things pop into my head, you know, there's just something I'm just like, this guy used to be very, very popular, beloved by so many people. What if like nobody comes to visit him ever? You know, this might be fun for him. He might enjoy having somebody show up that's just super excited to talk about his life. And, and I, w I wasn't even planning on walking in with my camera and vlogging anything. I just, I just wanted to meet him. So, um, so my friend got back to me with an address and I looked it up and it looked like, because of the parking lot, I said, this looks like it could be what I'm looking for because I had read that he was living in an assisted living facility. And so I decided, you know, as I said, I was going to come back through. So um, I planned the day that I was going to come back through and I was coming from Tennessee. So it looked like based on my GPS, I was going to get over there to where he is, um, or at least where I was hoping and thinking he was. Um, I was going to get over there about 3.30. Well, I was hitting traffic left and right. I just kept hitting the freeway kept going down to one lane for no reason and it, you know, the time just kept going and I said, you know, 3.30 was a perfect time because, you know, it's not breakfast, it's not lunch, it's not dinner, it's even kind of after nap time if he takes a nap or something. I said, you know, I really don't want to bother him because I feel like this is kind of crazy enough as it is, but I also felt like, hey, an assisted living facility, you know, they're going to have a front desk. I'll be able to go up, ask. Then they can tell me, you know, they can call his room and ask if he wants to have a visitor or not. That way I'm just not, you know, showing up, knocking on his door, walking in or anything. And um, so the address my friend gave me, you know, I drove to that and instead of getting there at 3.30, I got there at 4.20. And as I was pulling up to it, uh, it was on the corner and I couldn't see where the driveway was. So I ended up driving right past it and I went down to the next turn turned around, came back, and parked my car. And where I parked my car was directly looking at the road that I had just 
driven down when I passed the, the place. And as I was parking the car, I saw another car drive right in front of me and the passenger window was down and there was an African-American man in the passenger seat with a red kind of golfer's hat, like a Kangol hat. And uh, I looked at him and I go, gosh, that could have been him. <laughs> that actually kind of looked like that could have been him. Maybe I missed him. I don't know. So I uh, got out and I had stopped and bought a football along the way. I was going to pay him. I had brought some cash and I wanted to give him some money um, towards, you know, whatever. And uh, just hope, you know, for maybe like an autograph or something just to remember the moment. And um, so I got out of my car and got in the trunk, got my football out, put it in a bag. And I started walking to the front of the facility and there was a guy out uh, maintaining the, the grounds. He was actually like, you know, uh, putting fertilizer and watering the flowers and everything. So he, I walked right past him. And as I walked past, out of the corner of my eye, on the road coming beside me, I see that same car that had passed me earlier. And it's got the same guy with the red hat. And I go, oh my gosh. I go, that's the fridge. That's got to be him. So the car pulls in and pulls right up to where I am. And the guy who's doing all the gardening goes, welcome back, Mr. Perry. And I go, Mr. Perry, awesome. And the fridge looks out his window. He's in the passenger seat. And uh, I think a family member, uh, sister, somebody was probably the driver. And they both look out and see me. I didn't say anything to him. But they looked at me like they knew me. They got a big smile on their face and they start waving to me like, hey, hey, how's it going? And I'm like, hi. <laughs> so I start walking up to the car and they're like, hey, how's it going? How are you doing? And I was like, I'm good. I said, uh, I know this can be kind of strange, but I'm a fan of yours. And I just, uh, I travel all over the country and um, I just made it a point. To, I, I literally just parked my car and stopped here and, uh, was hoping to meet you and he goes and I see I know I re remember all of a sudden that he has like a, a hearing issue and that he reads lips so he goes oh okay well let me get out and get situated and we'll talk so his uh the person helping him comes out of the car and uh gets his wheelchair out he he is in a wheelchair uh and it takes him a little bit of time to get out, but uh, the people there I could tell loved him. The guy that was uh, working on the grounds was joking with him, like, hey, Mr. Perry, let me know if you need any help. And I, I had said the same thing when I was over there. I said, hey, you know, I'm a strong guy. If you need any help getting out, by all means, don't, don't hesitate. I'm, I'm right here. And he's, okay, I'll let, I'll let you know. So he took his time, you know, he got out, had himself like some Chinese food in a to-go box and, uh, and the guy that was doing all the, the lawn care and everything had some miracle grow. He goes, Mr. Perry, you want some miracle grow? <laughs> and he said, yeah, give me some of that. I need to get bigger, don't I? I gotta grow. That's the whole point here is to grow big and strong. <laughs> I said, I don't know if the world can take you getting any bigger and stronger. So he wheeled up by me and, um, and he coughed. And I heard like a little gurgle, almost like there was a sickness in there. And uh, he said, well, what can I help you with? And I said, you know, I'm just a, I said, I'm a big fan of you from when I was a kid. I said that watching you in the Super Bowl of 85 made me a, a football fan, um, even more than a football fan, a, just a, a fridge fan. So I've loved everything you've done. And I said, and I'm a fan of Windy City Heat, the movie that you did. And he, he smiled and he's, oh yeah, yeah. I said, and I just, uh, you know, I said, I don't, I see you don't do very many you know, card shows or autograph shows or anything. I just really wanted to meet you. And he said, well, I, I do some, not that many, but some. He said, well, thank you for coming out and meeting me. He said, I just, uh, it's not a real good time because I'm getting, I'm getting, I have a sickness right now and I need to get inside. He said, but did you, did you have something you wanted me to sign? I said, yes, I did. I said, if you wouldn't mind, I said, I brought a football and I was hoping maybe you would sign it for me just to display at my house. And just cause I'm, you know, such a huge fan and everything. I said, you know, and I'll, I'll be happy to give you some money for it and everything. And he said, I'm happy to sign it. So he, he took the football and he said, 
Now, do you want me to put 72 or do you want me to put 66? Because I got to ask, you know. I said, oh, I know. I know, I know. It says, especially here in South Carolina because he was a star for Clemson. Uh, in fact, he said that he, um, he had kicked at one point when he was at Clemson a 55-yard uh, field goal. So he was, that's why I say, his guy was a really good athlete. Okay, you know, you know, he's always saying he can stuff the ball and so on a basketball, I can believe it. Sadly, when, I don't, I don't, I didn't ask what the situation was, but um, when we took a photo together, he did have like, um, I don't know, my, a friend of mine said he thought it was a pacemaker thing or uh, maybe he'd, he just maybe was at a doctor's appointment or something. Cause yeah, it was 420, I thought that was so weird that I would meet him right there. But I also thought to myself, my gosh, like, was this ever meant to be? I mean, what are the odds that literally the moment that I'm walking up there, he pulls right up? I mean, what, what, what are the odds? I mean, really crazy. Happy to report he's uh, really happy. Seems like he's doing, you know, as well as can, can be. He's got a positive attitude and everything. Um, I think the health's about the same. Um, he didn't... He, I actually, when he drove by, I wasn't sure if it was him because his face looked so much thinner than I expected. I had seen him, you know, in the early 2000s on um, Howard Stern and, and doing like some of that kind of stuff. So he was a little bigger then, but um, he seemed to have slimmed down now. And uh, one thing I noticed was that I went online to buy one of his shirts because I figured what better way to send a little bit of money his way than to... Uh, you know, maybe his family sells all kinds of fridge shirts and uh, I can buy one. I couldn't find any, there are none. So I contacted a couple of friends that, uh, that run shirt businesses where they make the shirts, send them out, pay you and everything, talk to them. And then, um, so when I got there, I said, you know, I, wa I also wanted to mention to you, I said, I have nothing to gain from this, but I said, I noticed you have no merchandise, you have no shirts, no nothing online people can buy. And who I think it was his sister, she said, oh yeah, we don't have anything. I said, well, I would like to help you if you're interested, put you in touch with somebody that can help make that stuff for you and just cut you a check every month. And that would be some extra income. And, and Fridge said, I'd like that, I'd like that. So I gave him my number and my email and stuff. And uh, they contact me, I'm totally willing to help. Um, you know, I just, um, I feel, you know, there's certain people when I was growing up, like Hulk Hogan, Mr. T, the fridge, these guys were just larger than life. And to know now that we're so many years later and these guys are getting older and their bodies are breaking down, people are forgetting about them and things like that. I just, um, I don't know, there was something, I just felt like, you know, maybe going to visit him would be a nice gesture. I mean, he's Southern, people from South Carolina in my experience have been very hospitable, very kind. And I thought, you know, like I said earlier, the I felt like the worst that could happen was I show up, go up to the front desk, say, you know, I'm a fan of Mr. Perry's. I'd like to see if I could, you know, visit him for a few minutes. And for them to say, Mr. Perry doesn't want to see you or Mr. Perry doesn't want visitors, you know. I figured, okay, if that happens, I'll get in my car and go home. And if he wouldn't have been there, you know, just uh, I happened to show up and he wasn't there, I probably would have taken off right away, obviously, and so I would have missed him. So. I got to meet him, really cool. The fridge was, um, he was really cool. I'm, I'm really glad that I got to meet him because he was a nice guy. And for as much as I, I saw him in growing up, um, I was just kind of afraid that that moment would pass and that I wouldn't get to get to tell somebody that was super cool in my eyes how much I thought of them. So that was my fridge story and um, that actually just happened like three or four days ago. So. This, uh, this photo is very recent. So here's the football. He was nice enough to sign for me. Very cool. That was just something that I always, you know, one of those little oddities I always thought would be cool to have. Well, my friends, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it was a little crazy. It's not uh, every day that I go searching someone down. Certain weird cases when they're just kind of not anywhere to be found otherwise. I think it's kind of, I don't know. Sometimes I think the people that you do it for appreciate it. I hope that it didn't bother the fridge that I did that. So thank you all for watching. I want to thank Dan Stoner, Daryl Waldron, Beth, and Kelly the Advocate for becoming my newest Patreons. 
We will see you all next time. Have a great night and goodbye.